Well guys, what you see next to me is a used gaming PC which I built for under 300 bucks with all the mods and stuff that you see. And it probably looks pretty much brand new since we customized it all and since we went ahead and basically refurbished it, it is kind of brand new. Now welcome back at Unwatered PSUs and let's go over how I've done this and how you can build a very similar one for pretty much the same price. It is a very good time right now to be building a gaming PC. Let's get started. Now it all started because I saw up for sale an RTX 3060 in a very strange advert and I was like okay this thing costs 160 bucks surely it has some issues. So I went ahead and I purchased it either way and being a Zotac of course it was severely overheating. We are talking over 100 degrees, which is an insane temperature to see on a GPU. But that didn't scare me. I just went ahead and performed a full cleanup and repaste on it. I really suspect this card was used for mining, but it doesn't matter. So we went ahead, cleaned it all up, put some new paste on it. And while I was at it, I was like, hey, hold on a second. I'm dismounting all of it. And this thing is really dusty, really dirty. I'm gonna have to dismount the fan blades either way from the shroud to properly clean it. Some data vac and compressed there isn't gonna be enough. May as well paint it. So I went ahead and got the cheapest white paint I could find and with no primer, no sanding, I just sprayed it on the shroud. But while I was at it, I was like, hold on, let me paint my stock CPU cooler as well. Now, this is a stock AMD Ryzen cooler, basically the one you get with every 3000 and 5000 series AMD Ryzen CPU and there are just four screws to dismount it which is very simple. Now you generally do not want to paint your fans but in this case we did just a very light spray paint. If you see it in person it's not even really white it is kind of like snow color pretty much like a bit grayish so it's not interfering with fan performance at all and I painted the shroud of the cooler and fan itself as well. Now I went ahead and mounted back the actual cooler on the GPU and I think it looks better even than the Zotac Twin Edge white version because it has contrast fans and especially when it's vertical mounted I think it looks nice and also the logo Zotac which lights on it is still lighting on because I did such a light coat which is I think the key even though it is easy to get scratched I think it's the best for light modding like this but now you're probably wondering okay 300 bucks you've already paid like 10 bucks in paint how did you manage to make it all fit it's 160 for the gpu well the 3060 in reality was actually a 3060 ti you can actually see it in the heaven benchmark part where i show the temperature and the guy just mislisted it so i got a 3060 ti for the price of a 3060 and 160 bucks shipped is a very good price even for a 3060 if you ask me. We are on to a very good start so far but the deal I got on the motherboard, CPU and RAM, is probably even better. So I actually bought this broken combo with RAM, SSD, motherboard and a Ryzen 5 1600 but no worries this is not a video with a 1600 on it even though i have re-reviewed the ryzen 5 1600 in 2024 if you want you can go check out the review that cpu is like five to ten bucks on the used market right now and it's a six core it seems like a good deal but it's not really a good deal for gaming i do not recommend it the cheapest thing i recommend is a ryzen 5 3600 which is what i've got here today and i paid a whopping 15 bucks for it because it had some bent pins on the back which i just bent back and the CPU is now working. Why did I pay so little for the combo? Well, because the motherboard was broken and so the guy thought that all the components on the motherboard were broken as well. I kind of cheated here a little bit because the cooler is not actually the cooler I got in the combo. The cooler I got in the combo was just full of thermal paste, so I couldn't be bothered cleaning it. Also, it had some rust on the screws. So since I have like 10 of these laying around, I just got a brand new one and I put that one. So this is where I'm cheating a little bit, but I could have used the used one if I wanted to, but I chose to swap it out. And why the motherboard was not working is pretty simple. So the guy was trying to insert the USB 3.0 on the motherboard and he bent all the pins and he also bent the IO pins. So it was short circuiting. Also the battery was dead and also the BIOS 
was for some reasons corrupted, but I have a programmer, so I just flashed it back. So basically corrupted BIOS bent connectors on the motherboard and that battery is what the issue were, but I just sorted them out in probably like half an hour for the mall and it's now working again. So I paid basically broken hardware money for a fully working product. I paid 40 bucks for the whole combo and literally SSD is working, RAM is working, everything is working. Now actually, I was gonna use a Corsair MP500 in the combo, but then it just had issues so I went with a SATA drive. SATA M.2 drive is what I have here right now and I also got a used hard disk which I paid two bucks for it. It's a 500 gigabyte hard disk with like 600 days of usage. I'm not sure you should buy one, <laughs> but you know, I had to keep the budget tight, so I went with it, you know, just desperate times. And now to make the aesthetic, aside from the white painting, I should have done the RAM too, by the way, but the RAM is tricky to paint. What I got to make the aesthetic is the case. Now this is a Noah case. Now Noah was a brand I liked a lot a few years back. I even made like a graphene cooled PC in a NOVA case. But nowadays I don't really like them that much because I think they've gone a little bit too much on the cheaper side without being that cheap, if it makes sense. But this one I got used and uh, I spent a nice 40 minutes just wiping it with isopropyl alcohol. And now it looks brand new and it comes with four included ARGB fans. Paid 20 bucks for the case because it had like a broken stand. Power supply, I was very lucky there too because the guy who sold me the case just threw it in for an extra 20 bucks. So 40 bucks total for the case and PSU combo and the PSU is actually very good. It's like Silence 80 plus bronze unit which I actually reviewed when it came out. So kind of funny that now I can buy one used. But anyways, we got this screen as an accessory and it is the Lamptron CT070. And now we've had Lamptron in the past on the channel, especially if you follow me on Instagram, where I post short content about PC building every day. I post a lot of behind the scenes stuff, which you don't see on YouTube. So in, by the way, go follow me there if you wanna see it. And also subscribe to the channel here if you're liking the content so far. But basically Lamptron is a brand who has been making like fan controllers, screens for a while, and they make very good ones. I've tried them already, but this one is touch screen. So you can control basically the ARGB defense, and even if you have like a water cooling setup, you can monitor with temperature sensors, the airflow in the system, which I find like really cool. And uh, you also have a remote to control it. They sell it to you with a fan controller and RGB controller, all including the price, which is very good in my opinion. And that basically fills out the rest of our budget to get to 300 bucks, but the PC was so cheap. You know, I had to splurge on something to make it a little bit more unique for you guys in the thumbnail, or you wouldn't have clicked on this video. Am I right? This is how we filled out the budget. And this little thing is cool. I mean, listen, I can just touch screen control, all the colors on my system. I can check the fans, just change them in real time. Of course, on a PC like this, it's kind of wasted. Ideally, you want like a custom loop where you can monitor, control all the fans separately for uh, the radiator cooling your GPU, the radiator cooling your CPU. Again, I find it really cool either way. Arrived to this point of the video, you probably want to know about the performance of this thing. Even though I've been doing budget builds similar to this for a few years right now. So if you're followers of the channel, you probably know already, but since not many of you guys are followers, why aren't you followers? You probably don't know. So basically we have overclocked the RAM, overclocked the CPU, and now I recently made a tutorial on how you can get basically any DDR4 RAM to like 3000 megahertz horizon to get a lot of extra performance out of it. So we've done that. And now CPU Z score reflects that. It's very good, performing nicely. But what reflects it more is the fire strike. I mean, take a look at the fire strike. Now that is something I'm proud of. Good score with temperatures under control. Of course, the CPU is overclocked. So we are hitting 80 degrees on the CPU, but with the stock cooler, it's not too bad. GPU on the other hand is running cool. We dropped like, 25 degrees with a simple repaste and cleanup. Firestrike though is a synthetic benchmark, so you're probably wondering, okay, but how does this thing game? And well, it games pretty well, let me tell you. So you can play Apex Legends close to 200 FPS, 1080p, and play it pretty nicely. If you're into Call of Duty on the other hand, well, it's a bit more heavy, but still you get very close to the 100 FPS mark with pretty good 1% lows. You don't go under 60 on the 1% lows, so it's good experience for 60 years gaming and of course you can play high refresh rate fortnite on it this is a basically a no bottleneck build because we have pcie gen 4 36 ti is running nicely so we are basically maxing out the 36 ti unless of course we are playing in 
CPU bound scenarios like CSGO at 720p. So on average, you can expect the performance on a PC like this of basically any benchmark you see online with a 3060 Ti, maybe slightly better because we have everything overclocked, but around there. So nothing new, but still I find it absolutely insane that we can play high refresh rate 1080p in a PC that basically without the aesthetic upgrades costs us like 230 bucks. Like it's really cheap. And even at 300 bucks, you have a PC that's looking nice, it's looking brand new, and it performs really well. So let me know if you think it's a good budget build. Let me know if you think I should not have painted the hardware white, or if you have anything against DIY customizing your stuff. I think I'm gonna start doing it more, unless you guys really dislike it. And also let me know what you think about just adding screens to fill out the void in aquarium cases and in our souls. And maybe again, drop a like and subscribe for more, and I hope to see you guys again. Bye bye.